Are you ready for chapter 23 of A Day of Rest by Edna Creekmore Carmen? Here's the picture that goes with that chapter. Let's get started. This shed houses the farm equipment, Doug said as he led the sheriff and the two federal officers he had collected on the way to the barn over to a small door beside two large double doors. Pulling the small door open, he stepped into the dark interior. The flickering lantern cast high swaying shadows on the wagon, pulled up behind the double doors and then on the broad plank wall beyond. Back of the wagon and nearly blocking the view of the rest of the shed was a large tractor. In the gloomy depths beyond the tractor, the federal officers could just make out dark forms of plows and other equipment. They glanced at each other. The shed would be a good place to hide something. However, they turned and followed Doug, who had taken a pitchfork from the wall and was now leaving the shed. The sheriff took another fork from the wall and followed the federal officers out of the shed but at the door swerved and went back to the gate. At the gate, he took his hat and laid it on the fence post as he listened to Doug explain that the shed on the other side of the barn was empty now. In the winter, I leave the far door of the shed open and the young cattle in the back pasture can shelter from the wind in bad weather and still have the advantage of the pasture on sunny days. The house beyond has the chickens on the ground floor and the corn crib above. The sheriff began pulling off his jacket as he watched Doug hang his lantern on a nail on the wall. I'm going to get the hay out of that loft as you look around down here, Doug said as he walked across to the ladder leading to the loft. Don't dare take a lantern up there. Might set the barn on fire. It means I have to work in the dark, but that beats working in the heat of the day under that tin roof. Confident that Doug was going to win his maneuvers to get the federal men to get his hay out of the loft, the sheriff began pulling off his shirt. The sheriff knew Doug had won and began untying his shoes as Mr. Waters rushed to cut Douglas off from the ladder that was fastened to the wall of the barn. Wait a minute, Mr. McTay. We would like to check the loft first. Check the loft? Doug asked in feigned surprise. There's no way you can check the loft in the dark, and I'm certainly not going to let you take a lantern up there. The place would be blazing in no time. We have to check it before you go up there, Mr. Waters insisted. The sheriff had by that time taken both his shoes and his socks off and was emptying his pockets into his shoes. Doug, if you give your pitchfork to Mr. Waters and tell us where you want the hay, we'll get the hay out and check the loft at the same time. The twinkle of mischief in Doug's hazel eyes deepened as he saw the sheriff in his undershirt and bare feet. He shifted his glance to Waters in his suit and dress shoes, but he kept a straight face as he shifted his eyes back and met the sheriff's long suffering gaze. I want the hay in the side shed for the young cattle this fall. They will get it first before they start on the new hay. You will see trap doors on the far wall of the loft. When you unfasten the catch, the doors drop down and the hay can be shoved into the long bins that stand in the shed along that wall. The sheriff climbed the ladder with ease, but was startled as he stepped over into the loft by a hiss. Do you have snakes up there, Doug? Could be, but most likely it's the cat. She has some kittens hidden up there. I forgot about her. Do you think you can catch the kittens? I'll get a basket. As he reached down for the basket that Doug unhooked from the wall and handed up to him, the sheriff saw that Waters was beginning to climb the ladder. The idiot was still wearing his suit coat, but that didn't matter. Worse, Waters still wore his dress shoes. The shoes were so long that only the toe was on the ladder, not the ball of the foot. 
Better pull off your shoes. You'll never make it, the sheriff cautioned. Waters ignored the suggestion and climbed on without a word. Several times his foot slipped, but by hanging on with his hands, he was able to avoid a fall. The sheriff shrugged his shoulders and turned away. Let the idiot break his neck. He was none of his kin. The kittens were collected from their nest in the hay into the basket but the mama cat fled to the ledge over the hall, hissing a dare to anyone to try to catch her. She didn't go far. With a little effort, the sheriff could have reached the place where she sat, but he knew the mother cat wouldn't be there by the time his hand reached up. The cat could take care of herself, and she would follow the mewing of her kittens.